In last year's playoffs, some accused Joel Embiid of playing dirty after he stepped on Grant Williams' head. Passed up that seven-foot shot a moment ago. Almost a turnover. Embiid falls to the court. Bodies littered on the hardwood here. This very well could have been an accident, but maybe it was his frustration getting the best of him after losing in the playoffs. Because this season, after another string of playoff losses, Embiid's dirty plays have been undeniable. There is no question that at least two of these three plays were not accidents. First, we had Embiid injuring Mitchell Robinson after he grabbed him from the ground. Underneath Ananobi on the block. Contact with Embiid. Shovel pass. Robinson is bumped, but look out. I don't think Robinson appreciated the pull down from Embiid. Then we had another accidental step, but this time on Josh Hart after Hart drove to the basket and was fouled. Behind to shoot, Hart rummages through and gets fouled by Embiid. Embiid, but he caught a piece of Hart then afterwards. And finally, we had an elbow to Jalen Brunson's face. On the same play here, watch this. Brunson gets a little forearm shiver from Joel. So what is the deal? Why the dirty play? Well, we are watching a man who is very aware that his entire legacy is on the line and things are starting to get desperate. After scoring 70 points this very season, instead of celebrating the fact that he had broken a Philly record held by Wilt Chamberlain, Joel Embiid said, To be in that class is great, but it doesn't really mean anything until you win the whole thing. I think the whole conversation changes what people see about you. And the proof of this is right in front of our faces. After after scoring just one point in the fourth quarter of game four and passing up on a wide open mid-range shot late to attempt to draw a foul at the basket, the Reddit post about this game collectively attacked Embiid. Garbage. Absolute bum. Passing up a wide open midi to foul bait is peak Embiid. He was playing the Knicks third center, El Mayo. Don't come to me with that injury BS, El Mayo. So like, do his injuries just come and go every game? If he's capable of dropping 50 the game before, I feel like this horrendous display, not even an injury can excuse. So what's up, Mike here? And at this point in time, it is very obvious. Joel Embiid is worried that if he does not get playoff success, his legacy is going to slip away from him. And as we can see from the comments, I think he's onto something. It is very likely that Joel Embiid's dirty play is a result of the anger he has towards never reaching even a conference finals. The question remains, is this worry about his legacy justified? History tells us yes, yes it is. We just saw the comments after game four when in game three, Joel had 50 points. And these comments have also come after four regular seasons that have been nothing short of historic for Joel Embiid. But before we dive into the numbers of the those historic seasons, let's consider the cases of Chris Paul, James Harden, and Kawhi Leonard. Throughout his career, Chris Paul was known as a point god. However, you would be hard pressed to find him in anyone's top five list of greatest point guards of all time, despite the fact that CP3 is a 12 time All Star, four time member of the first team All NBA, and has made 11 total All NBA selections. Meanwhile, in the late 80s and early 1990s, Isaiah Thomas was the leader of the Bad Boy Pistons. He individually is not in the same league as Paul when it comes to awards. Isaiah did make 12 All-Star teams, but was just a three-time member of the first team All-NBA and only had five All-NBA selections to again, Chris Paul's 11. Isaiah though is considered by many to be the third best point guard of all time behind just Magic Johnson and Steph Curry as Isaiah won back-to-back -back championships and was Michael Jordan's biggest roadblock to his first title. James Harden in his career has made six first team All-NBAs to Dwayne Wade's two. Harden won one MVP, Dwayne Wade won zero. With that said, you cannot find a single person who would historically rank Harden over Wade, as Dwayne Wade is a three-time champion. Kawhi Leonard is seen as one of this generation of basketball's biggest success stories. He was already named to the NBA's top 75 due to his two finals MVPs, but in terms of individual awards, Kawhi is only a six-time All-Star and five-time member of the All-NBA, while Paul George is a nine-time All-Star and has made the All-NBA six times. Again, when discussing Kawhi and Paul George historically, there is no discussion, Kawhi gets the nod, and we get the point here. Winning a title is the most important thing an NBA player can do, and time is starting to run out for Joel Embiid. But guys, before we continue, I do want to say we have a new channel, Coors Light, where we just made a video, what if Victor Wembanyama played in Michael Jordan's era? I put Victor Wembanyama in Michael Jordan's era to see, could Wemby overtake the GOAT? Could he ruin the Bulls two separate three-peats and even steal some MVPs from Mike? And the results were shocking. 
hunting. It would be awesome if you checked out that video. The link is in the description. And also subscribe to the new channel for more videos like that. For now, let's continue with this video. But what is making this seemingly much worse is that Joel does not take the losses on himself. He keeps blaming other factors. After a hectic game two finish that saw the Sixers lose on a questionable no call, Embiid said this to the media. Tyrese got fouled. That's just unacceptable. There's a bunch of fouls. Again, this was questionable, but the series was tied at this point. I would say focusing on winning the next game is the right mindset to have. And the comments agree. In fact, the comments were brutal. The crybaby is back. Arkenstein owned you in the last four minutes, little pup. That's how I act when I can't get it up. And this dude always acts this way come playoffs, like he's surprised how tough playoff basketball is. He's upset that he has to work harder and things are tougher in the playoffs. No one has ever won with that attitude. I think anyone watching this clip is with that last comment. No one wins championships with this kind of attitude. What makes this worse is that in the regular season, Joel Embiid has been a superstar. He has put up a historic resume. In the last four seasons, from the ages of 26 to 29, Joel has been in direct competition with Nikola Jokic. Jokic is now going to go down as an all-time center, but Embiid has seemingly held his own, again, in the regular season. In 2021 and 2022, Joel finished second in MVP voting. Then last season, he won the MVP as he's put up historic stats. From the ages of 26 to 29, Embiid has averaged a combined 31.5 points per game, 10.9 rebounds per game, 4.1 assists per game, and 1.5 blocks a game. He is the only player in NBA history to average at least 30 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, and 1 block per game between the ages of 26 and 29. Already incredibly impressive, and if we were to lower those numbers to 27 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1 block per game between those same ages, we would still be left with only 4 names, all NBA legends in Giannis, Shaq, Kareem, and Embiid. If you have tremendous success in the regular season, understandably, a lot is expected out of you in the playoffs. And the shirt Scottie Pippen wore to the NBA playoffs after the Bulls won 72 games really says it all. Don't mean a thing without a ring. We know this is true. Shaq reminds Charles Barkley of this on a nightly basis, and with Joel Embiid, matters are made even worse because of two factors. One, throughout his career, Joel Embiid has gotten worse in the playoffs instead of gotten better, and two, Joel has had rosters that seemingly should have been able to make deep runs, but he has never even made it to the conference finals. Looking at Joel's playoff numbers, we find that when the lights get the brightest, Embiid shrinks, and it's always been someone else who has taken the blame up until now. In 2019, in the second round, Kawhi Leonard sunk a game winner to beat the 76ers, and the Raptors would go on to win the NBA championship. This was seemingly Embiid's best chance at a championship himself. However, in the series against an ancient Marc Gasol, Joel shot 37% on 13 attempts per game as he averaged just 17.6 points per game and had more turnovers per game than assists, that was his all-time worst performance with the best roster he had. But Embiid's playoff failures would continue. In 2021, Ben Simmons became a living meme, understandably so, after passing on a potential dunk in the clutch versus Trey Young. However, in that series versus the Hawks, Joel Embiid was also very much to blame. As a center, he had over four and a half turnovers a game, more than double the amount anyone else had on this roster. And in that game seven, loss to a much worse Hawks team. Embiid had eight turnovers, including a key turnover down four with 44 seconds left. Rough. In 2022, Joel was injured and played in only four games versus the Heat, but in those four games, he shot 42.5% on under 20 points per game. Okay. Injuries happen, that has seemingly been the story of Joel Embiid's career. But then came 2023, where Harden was now the one with all of the blame put on him. But against the Celtics in a seven game series, Embiid shot 42% on 19 attempts per game. And in the final game seven, he shot five for 18 with four turnovers with a plus minus of minus 28. If you are the star player of a franchise for this long, eventually the blame is going to turn to you. And unfortunately with this blame, Embiid Embiid has had the worst kind of attitude possible. A desperation to win that comes in the form of anger and dirty plays on the court, combined with a strange, sad persona after the losses. His game four comments after another tough loss. How strange was it for you the past two games with this significant amount of Knicks fans? It, it is disappointing, and I've been here for 
10 years. Kind of pisses me off. It's not okay. And again, the comment section ripped him. Embiid never has any accountability for anything. What a worm of a man he is. Game five is going to be a brutal beatdown for him. Please, no Joel Embiid trade rumors to the Knicks this summer. We don't want him. This dude is a cornball. Dirty player and threw his own fans under the bus. What a disgrace. This is our 2023 MVP. This is how quickly the fans have turned on him. So can Joel Embiid turn everything around with a playoff run and a title in the future? Yes. As we can see though, if he does not get that championship ring, if he does end his career without a title, basketball fans are going to come at his neck. They're already calling him a lame cornball and a worm of a man, despite the extreme success he has had in the regular season, despite the fact that he has been the Sixers franchise player, he has been loyal to the Sixers for many years at this point. None of that has mattered at all. Without a championship, eventually everyone turns on you, which does explain Embiid's anger on the court, but does not justify these types of dirty plays at all. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you will also enjoy the video we just did on Chet Holmgren, who is actually putting up generational talent type numbers. Or you'll like this video we recently did on Anthony Edwards, who Michael Jordan himself has said resembles Michael Jordan. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And peace.